mallet finger treatment. Extension splint of the DIP only for about six weeks or more is the usual treatment. Acute injuries with minimal displacement and no joint subluxation are treated with extension splinting of the DIP joint for six to eight weeks. You need to keep the splint for 24 hours daily. The splinting can be volar splinting or it can be dosal splinting. Allow the PIP to move freely in flexion and extension. After six weeks of splinting, night splinting may be needed for longer periods. It appears that supplemental night splinting after full-time splinting treatment is controversial. It may not really improve the outcome. Wearing the splint may not be liked by professionals such as doctors, hairdresser, dentist, and they may desire the surgery of percutaneous pin fixation. Conservative treatment can be tried even if the treatment is delayed up to four weeks with low long-term complication rates. There is an increased complication rate with surgical treatment. How about surgery? The goal is to keep the DIP extended until the bone or the tendon heals. KY utilization is a very common technique. What are the indications for surgery? Volar subluxation of the distal pharynx? Avulsion fracture with a large joint fragment, more than 50%. Some people think that 30% of articular involvement is an indication for surgery. Some orthopedic surgeons will continue to treat this injury by closed means, by splint, even if there is a volar subluxation of the joint. The rationale is that a stiff finger that's treated by closed means is better than a stiff finger that is treated by surgery. A closed injury, with or without a small avulsion fracture, is different than a closed injury that involves a large fragment, more than 50% of the joint, or an injury that causes subluxation of the DIP joint. Mallet finger with subluxation of the DIP joint is clearly an indication for surgery. It may require open or closed reduction and pinning of the fracture or the joint. A single pin is usually sufficient for the treatment of a purely tendon injury. When pinning a purely tendon injury, make sure you mark the affected finger on the dorsal aspect and also the volar aspect preoperatively because the x-ray will not show any evidence of injury. This will help you to avoid pinning the wrong finger. The finger position will change if the finger is pinned with the palm down or the palm up. Here is another method for pinning a mallet finger with a fracture. It's called the blocking percutaneous pin. The extension block pinning technique. Flex the DIP and insert the KOR from distal to proximal direction. The KOR is passed dorsal to the bony fragment and through the extensor tendon into the middle pharynx. Then extend the DIP and the KOR will help in buttressing and reducing the fracture with extension of the DIP. Keep the DIP extended by fixing it with another wire. Long-term result of surgery. 
After the surgery, the patient may experience an extensor lag, but without functional deficit. What are the complications of mallet finger? A residual deformity that usually does not affect the function. Or swan neck deformity. Care must be taken during treatment to avoid this deformity. The PIP should be moving freely in extension and flexion to avoid this deformity. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.